Number 8. James and Lisa Goy A long-standing dispute between 47-year-old Jeffrey Spade and his neighbors James and Lisa Goy came to a deadly end after a brutal winter storm in early 2021. According to news reports, the Goys were shoveling their parking spots and dumping the snow across the street on Spade's property. Spade went outside and asked the couple to stop, and a heated argument quickly broke out. Surveillance footage showed the two parties hurling threats and insults at one another, with James Goy threatening to make Spade's life a living hell. The Goys continued to taunt Spade until the moment he pulled a gun while walking toward them. James yelled at Spade to put the gun down, but instead, Spade began firing at the couple, striking them both and chasing after James as he tried running away. In the video, Lisa could be heard saying a final F you to Spade as he continued shooting her in the middle of the street. After emptying the gun, Spade went back inside his house and retrieved an AR-style rifle. He mercilessly fired bullets at the couple before saying, you could have kept your mouth shut and running back inside. Police were just arriving at the scene when they heard a gunshot from inside where they found Spade dead from a bullet wound. The horrifying footage garnered mixed reactions. Some people sympathized with the Goys who left behind a son, while others accused the couple of pushing Spade to his breaking point. But as the saying goes, it takes two to tango, and three lives were needlessly lost when petty drama spiraled out of control. Number 7. Aaron Howard in a shocking act of violence that was captured on camera, 37-year-old Aaron Howard was shot to death outside his home in Abilene, Texas during an argument with his neighbors in 2018. The deadly disagreement started out as a petty spat days earlier when Howard put an old mattress in a dumpster outside their apartment building. He found the mattress back in his yard the next day, so he returned it to the dumpster. His neighbor, 67-year-old John Miller, threw the mattress back into Howard's yard. It's unclear why Miller had a problem with the mattress being in the dumpster, which was where it was supposed to go. A confrontation between Howard and Miller quickly escalated into an aggressive shouting match. Footage recorded by Howard's fiancée, Cara Box, showed Miller threatening Howard with a pistol. Moments later, Miller's 30-year-old son, Michael, appeared with a shotgun. Howard yelled that the pair to put down their weapons, but the fight only became more heated. In an attempt to de-escalate things, Kara tried to get between the two parties, but the Millers opened fire on the couple, fatally striking Howard and narrowly missing Kara. After years of court delays, John and Michael Miller are scheduled to go on trial for murder in 2023. They plan to argue that they acted in self-defense under the state's Stand Your Ground law. Kara stands by her belief that Howard was needlessly murdered in cold blood and told reporters that she wants people to know the truth about what happened. The outcome of the case remains to be seen. Number 6. Bird and Melanie Billings After becoming extremely successful and wealthy, 66-year-old Florida businessman Bird Bud Billings and his third wife, 43-year-old Melanie, adopted 13 kids. The family lived in a sprawling mansion in Pensacola's Beulah neighborhood, but their seemingly blissful home life was tragically interrupted one evening in July of 2009, when Bud and Melanie were found shot to death inside their bedroom. Surveillance footage from the home's 16 security cameras shows a junky old red van pulling up to the house. Three masked suspects dressed in ninja-like garb exited the vehicle armed with guns and entered the residence through separate doors, while two additional intruders approached from a nearby wooded area. In the video, Bud Billings could be seen raising his hands in the air and briefly struggling with the intruders, who led him and Melanie into their bedroom at gunpoint. There were no security cameras in the bedroom, where the suspects executed the couple in cold blood. Bud and Melanie were each shot six times. Just five minutes after entering the house, the intruders were seen leaving with a microwave-sized safe. Investigators narrowed in on 35-year-old Leonard Patrick Gonzalez Jr. as the suspected mastermind of the plot. His father, 56-year-old Leonard Patrick Gonzalez Sr., admitted to driving the getaway van. Gonzalez Jr.'s landlord and friend, Pamela Long Wiggins, was deeply involved in the planning of the crime. She also helped hide and dispose of evidence, including the safe. Altogether, eight people were arrested in connection with the double homicide. None of them had any direct ties with the Billings, whom they targeted for the obvious fact 
that the family had money. The killers reportedly believed that their victims had millions of dollars of cash in the home, only to find that the safe was filled with identity documents, items of sentimental value, and other things that weren't worth the grand fortune that the suspects were expecting. Leonard Gonzalez Jr. was sentenced to death and remains on death row to this day. He continues to maintain his innocence from behind bars. Defendants Donnie Stallworth and Wayne Calderon received multiple life sentences, while the rest of the remaining five conspirators received sentences ranging between 17 and a half and 28 years. Number 5. Richard Arenas 46-year-old Richard Arenas was shot dead in 2013 while working on a car outside his home in Providence, Rhode Island. His nephew was with him that day and had stepped inside for just a few moments when a killer had fired three bullets into the back of Richard's head, giving him absolutely no opportunity to run or defend himself. Surveillance video from around the neighborhood showed a man with distinctly patterned shorts walking around the area shortly before Richard's murder. Later identified as 19-year-old Judia Dixon, the suspicious individual could be seen walking up to the victim's home to watch what was going on. At one point, the suspect left the home and returned with his hoodie pulled up over his head to conceal his face. Right after Richard was shot, the suspect was seen running from the direction of the scene in security footage captured from nearby homes. While following the man's path based on the videos, investigators found the murder weapon wrapped in a sweatshirt. Police caught up with the suspect a little while later when he was seen at another home in the area. Dixon fled the scene, leaving his distinctive shorts behind at the residence. Dixon was soon captured and charged with Richard's murder. The motive behind the disturbing crime remains a mystery to this day. He was also charged in connection with a non-fatal shooting that had occurred the previous year. As part of a plea deal, Dixon took responsibility for both crimes and was sentenced to life plus 20 years, ensuring that he'll never get out of prison. Number 4. Andrew Jenacek 27-year-old Andrew Jenacek was shot dead in a parking lot in Edgewater, Colorado in April 2018 while picking up dinner for his girlfriend. Witnesses reported seeing the shooter leaving a getaway car as Jenacek lay face down on the ground, dying from a single bullet wound to the chest. Jenacek's wallet and phone were found near his body, initially leading investigators to suspect that robbery was not a motive in his murder, but surveillance footage suggested otherwise. In the video, Jenacek could be seen dropping his wallet on the ground and attempting to disarm his attacker. He collapsed during the struggle, at which point the suspect got into the passenger side of a waiting sedan. The car ran over Jenacek's leg as it sped off from the scene. For the next three days, investigators collected witness accounts of the suspect and getaway car, surveillance footage from other locations, and information from a neighboring police department that suspected the same group in another burglary. They identified 21-year-old Alicia Valdez, 21-year-old Devin Drist Howard, and 20-year-old Caleb Vigil as the prime suspects, and arrested the trio on a multitude of charges. Devin Howard drove the getaway car, which was owned by Alicia Valdez, while Caleb Vigil carried out the actual attack on Jenacek. Howard and Vigil were each convicted of 16 or more counts, including murder, attempted murder, aggravated robbery, and conspiracy to commit murder. The court sentenced Howard to life plus 118 years, and Vigil to life plus 279 years. Alicia Valdez was found guilty of murder, attempted aggravated robbery and conspiracy to commit robbery, and is serving a life sentence without parole. Number 3. James Enright When 27-year-old outdoor enthusiast James Enright found himself wanting to devote more time to hunting and fishing, he moved from his hometown just outside the city of Vancouver to the more remote Vancouver Island. On Valentine's Day 2005, he met up with his friends Tori and Brandon for an anti-Valentine's Day hangout session. Shortly before 1 o'clock in the morning, the trio arrived at the Edmund Sky train station in Burnaby, where Brandon planned to catch a train home. In a terrifying turn of events that was captured on camera, the friends arrived at the station as a fight broke out between two groups of men. Tori began filming the ordeal on her cell phone from Enright's car. One particularly hostile man was seen acting out in a fit of rage with his shirt off while allegedly hurling racial slurs at his adversaries. When he saw Tori recording, he approached the car and punched the young woman in the face while yelling that he didn't care if she was a girl. Tori could be heard screaming 
as the camera went blank. Meanwhile, surveillance cameras continued rolling as Enright tried intervening to protect Tory. He exchanged a few punches with one of the suspects before suddenly falling backwards onto the floor. Enright had been stabbed, and he died from his injuries. Police arrested 18-year-old Teitusi Vikalani, who told investigators that he attacked Enright and his friends because they were filming the fight that was already going on. He denied hurting anyone and was released due to a lack of evidence. While reviewing surveillance footage, law enforcement gained a clearer understanding of the situation. They arrested Vikalani and another suspect, 22-year-old Jesse Selim, who admitted to stabbing Enright but claimed that he acted in self-defense. Selim was initially charged with murder but pleaded guilty to a reduced manslaughter charge and was sentenced to four and a half years in prison. Vikalani also pleaded guilty to manslaughter and was handed a six-month sentence. Number 2. Nathan Trapezano during his daily walk near his home in Indianapolis one morning in April 2014, 24-year-old computer programmer and father-to-be Nathan Trapezano was attacked by two men. Security footage showed one of the suspects forcefully guiding Trapezano into a parking lot and then shooting him in the abdomen. Nathan died from his injuries, leaving behind an expectant wife just days before his first wedding anniversary. Authorities quickly zeroed in on a troubled young man named Simeon Adams, who was suspected of killing Trapezano during a violent crime spree he committed while awaiting a court hearing for 13 alleged probation violations. Adams' probation officer could have had him locked up during that time, and it would have been appropriate given his extensive criminal history. But she didn't, and he was free to continue wreaking havoc in the streets. Trapezano's family already had to deal with wondering why Adams even had the opportunity to kill Nathan when they were dealt another blow. As part of a plea deal, Adams would admit to murder in exchange for a 55-year sentence, as opposed to the 78 years he could have otherwise faced. And he's still likely to see freedom far earlier than that. Based on good behavior and other factors, he could be released as early as 2048, at the age of 41, after serving just 33 years. While they considered the options given to them to be a far cry from justice, Trapezano's family agreed to the deal because it at least guaranteed that Adams would serve prison time. They didn't want the unpredictability of a trial, which would have risked an even lighter punishment, and they were at least glad to know that at least for now, the serial offender is behind bars. Number 1. Anthony Blaylock Shortly after 2 a.m. one morning in August 2017, a patrolling officer in Evansville, Indiana, overheard gunshots coming from the direction of a nearby American Legion post. He rushed to the scene, where he found 32-year-old father of three, Anthony Blaylock, clinging to life in the parking lot with multiple gunshot wounds to his torso. He died on the way to the hospital. Three other gunshot victims at the scene survived their injuries. Court documents state that police tried interviewing around a dozen people who were mostly uncooperative, but a few people were eventually willing to talk. At least one witness mentioned that Blaylock had argued with his cousin, 21-year-old Darius Bushrod, over money earlier that night. Security footage from the Legion's cameras showed the two men arguing in the parking lot after initially being separated by bystanders. In the video, Bushrod appeared to back away while shooting repeatedly at Blaylock. By the time an arrest warrant was issued for Bushrod, he had gone on the run. He was captured several months later in early 2018, after attempting to run from a house he was hiding out in as law enforcement closed in on the property. Bushrod was convicted of first-degree murder and received a 75-year prison sentence. If he lives to see freedom again, he probably won't experience it for very long. Records list his projected release date as 2074, at which point he'll be 78 years old. Thanks for watching. Would you rather live with the shame of accidentally deleting footage of a murder from a surveillance camera, knowing it could make or break the case, or with discovering that someone had talked about their murder plans within earshot of your doorbell camera, and that you could have prevented a tragedy if you had watched the footage sooner? Let us know in the comments below, and remember to subscribe. See you soon. Bye.